In the field of conservation ecology, tracking animals is a significantly useful method to aid in the monitoring and management of species. Traditional methods of tracking usually involve tracking a radio transmitter attached to a target animal and using a radio antenna to detect that transmitter. The way that this method usually works is that you take a radio antenna, like the one pictured here, and you point it in different directions until you get a signal. When a signal is detected, you know that an animal is located somewhere in that direction, so you proceed in that direction until the animal is found. This can make tracking animals over uneven terrain an arduous task, as the animal may be located in a direction with large plants or other physical obstacles. In 2013, the San Diego Zoo Institute for Conservation Research teamed up with UC San Diego's Engineers for Exploration to solve this problem by developing an intuitive and reliable drone-based system to track radio transmitters. A previous version of our system was deployed in 2017 on the island of Little Cayman and again in 2018 on Big Ambergris Cay in the Turks and Caicos Islands where researchers from San Diego Zoo's Institute for Conservation Research sought to track iguana hatchlings over a period of four weeks. The way that this system worked was that it would fly over a specified area in a lawnmower pattern, and then after completing the flight, information collected by the drone would then be used to generate an estimate of where the animal was located. When looking at the time distribution of different tasks in this process, they found that the same amount of time was being spent in calculations as it was spent in the air. This led to the development of our current system, which now calculates an estimate location in flight as data is being received in order to streamline the processes of the previous system and cut down the total time. This summer, we redesigned our UI for the system to be able to communicate with the drone's payload to configure search parameters the system needs to detect the target frequencies, as well as display information sent from the drone in real time. Through the UI, the user specifies the target frequency to be searched for, which must be in the range specified by center and sampling frequencies, and this will indicate to the drone which pings to pick up and include in the system's calculations. An issue with the previous version of this UI is that it made our efforts dependent upon Google Earth, which has no easy ability to function offline and is therefore a problem when tracking animals in areas with no internet connection, which is very common. This UI has the ability to load maps that drone, ping, and estimate locations will be displayed over, and this map can either be a loaded raster file or you can load in web maps, which can then be cached for offline use. During a flight, the vehicle's current position will be marked by this symbol on the map, and its path will be marked by a line as the flight continues. The colored dots on the map represent pings picked up by the drone payload as it moves along its path, and pings with stronger power will be colored red, and those with weaker power will be colored blue. The blue diamonds that is being displayed represents the current location estimate point being generated based on the pings received as the flight goes on, and you can observe this point changing and becoming more accurate as the flight continues. In an actual flight, the vehicle's pilot needs the vehicle to display its status so that the pilot doesn't have to take their eyes away from the drone and look at the computer. Our vehicle contains a system of onboard electronics that accomplishes this using a UI board. Our plan for the UI board during this summer was to fix and update the software to be able to process a handful of new inputs. The UI board was implemented into the project because after the processor changed from Intel's Joule to the UpCore, the inclusion of a UI board was needed to handle various functions. However, the former UI board software was missing some key abilities such as processing the altitude, heading, and voltage of the drone. So to fix this issue, we created programs which would be able to handle all of the previously untouched data. Now with the new modifications, the UI board can manage the necessary GPS information through the process shown in the diagram. The UI board was made to communicate data between itself, the GPS, the compass, and the onboard computer. During a flight, the UI board first receives information from the GPS and compass through a serial port. It then decodes the GPS, compass, and voltage data through the NMEA decoder and the compass module. The program then runs the combined data through the sensor encoder, which prepares the data to be sent. Finally, the data is sent to the onboard computer. At the same time, the onboard computer sends status packets which contain information about the status of itself to the UI board's status decoder through a serial port. The UI board then decodes and reads the message and proceeds to light up the five LEDs according to the status packet data. Throughout this summer, these students have put a significant amount of effort into developing well-engineered solutions to the problems we have. These solutions are robust and scalable which will enable future deployments with these changes to last longer in the field 
and be far easier to use. Over the coming months, we will continue to integrate these and other reliability and robustness changes to the radio telemetry tracker with the goal of fielding a fully operational and expedition ready system. We would like to acknowledge the much appreciated support provided by these organizations that have enabled this project over the past few years.